girls although I'm becoming more vocal because I'm like well this is who I am um uh I'm not willing to shut it down anymore I can't um I can't pretend to be something I'm not welcome to conversation for the soul I'm Linda Christine today I talk with Nikki freedom and peace her name says it all this girl is stepping into her freedom and she embodies so much peace. And it's amazing because this girl signed up to go through every trauma on the trauma list, I believe, when she came to this planet. And today is her coming out party where she steps into her gifts and shares that with the world. So she's a little nervous, but she has such an amazing story to share. I'm gonna ask everybody here to please like, share and subscribe. So beautiful stories like Nikki's can be heard from others and they can glean beautiful nuggets of wisdom from them. So here we go with Nikki, Freedom and Peace. Welcome Nikki, it's so wonderful to have you here today. Thank you. We were um, just talking before we got on here. Uh, this hasn't happened to me in probably three or four weeks, but I got knocked out this afternoon, had to go lay down, and I was out cold for like an hour and a half before I hopped on here. And you were saying you were feeling weird energy today too. Yeah, I felt it yesterday as well. I've been having lots of um intense dreams and I definitely astro traveled last night I think I do most nights actually um in fact I know I do most nights um yeah um I was off delivering things um or I had to go and find different things um and I just woke up with the word map map <laughs> um it's so interesting I feel like somebody told me that they had the same thing going on recently with maps it's so odd. Yeah, and I had it came up yesterday with um, my guys were saying just stick to the shopping list, stick to God's shopping list. Um, what is yeah. God's shopping list? I'm not quite sure. My guides um, come in; they they come in at a funny angle to other people. I haven't heard anyone else speak like this. They they um they either come in as a like in a jokey manner or in a very childlike simple way that I can understand um, like a playful way um, it, it's never a kind of an adult way of speaking um, that's yeah. beautiful I, 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 spirit has a sense of humor for sure definitely yeah. I, I get yeah. some some you know funny remarks every once in a while too yeah that's so do I yeah so do I yeah so Nikki, first of all, freedom and peace. Love that. Love that name you chose for yourself. Explain where that comes from. Um, in 2019, I was in the process of leaving the hus my husband of, of like nearly 20 years. And it was a very, to, I don't know, very um, rough time, <laughs> shall I say. Um, yeah, I can't really say a lot about it. I have to keep it a bit, um, yeah. Um, it was a very rough time anyway. It, it wasn't a normal breakup. And um, I turned to meditation to um, cope. And um, while I was still living in the house, planning to leave. Um, and during the meditation, it um, I was given the name Freedom and Peace. And at, one, at that point, I did put... I named it um, Nikki Freedom and Peace at last. It was like, um, I was just given those words. Um, yeah, and it was like I gained um, my freedom and my peace when I left that marriage. Um, so that's where that's come from. So yeah, in two, that was in 2019. So yeah. So it, it was that what sparked, um, cracked you open for your, on your conscious journey or were there other things prior to that that kind of led you to where you are now? Uh, my whole life has been one. It, it's just um, looking back now, um, my, I suppose my first eye opener was um, I, I'm in AA. I'm in Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm, I'm eight years sober. That was my first thank you my first 
I don't suppose you call it breakthrough as in um, the first time I had to sit down and face myself. Um, but an AA was like my, it was almost like, um, I see my life in two halves, like, and there's a pivotal point. So AA is in the middle and then there's a bit before and there's the bit after. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. And um, I, I learned a lot in AA. I learned how to be in the world, how, how to, I, I literally grew up in AA basically in those eight years. Um, so they, that set me off, but um, I can look back now and um, in the position I am now, and I can see that I was, I was, I was awake when I was, I came in awake. Um, this has been going on my whole life, um, but I haven't known what it was. Um, I've been psychic my whole life. I know that, and I would, I would often say things to my parents, and um, they, my voice is starting to shake now. This is probably the first time I've ever spoken about it properly. Um, you know, I would say things to my parents that happened. Um, I had, I know that I've had a few walk-ins, um, sort of in my childhood. Um, I had a near-death experience, um, which I don't remember a great deal about. Um, in my, I think it, I, I, I got it in my head. It's kind of all brushed under the carpet in my family. I've got it in my head. It was pre-primary school, but, um, it, I was young anyway. Um, what so happened had, to you? I um I, I went with my mum to an open air swimming pool and this is the information that I've got and sort of it was never really spoken about in my family which is really odd um I just picked up snippets um when I was younger and then it all started kind of coming to me um yes yeah, so I went to this open air swimming pool and there were it was an old-fashioned place and it had a gap under the door and for whatever reason I decided to crawl under the gap and I just ran to the deep end and jumped in and drowned and basically passed over came back yeah. um yeah but it's never been talked about but I know it happened and um yeah it it yeah <laughs> I don't know how much detail to go in but yeah um, go into as much detail as you want I mean we I know, so many things that. have happened to me so many things so many things I got hit by a car when I was 13 and that oh my was gosh. Um, that was another spiritual awakening I've had quite a few walk-ins um how, how do you know you had a walk-in what describe um, that experience and what was I the purpose I don't know if I can I don't know if I can um I don't know if I can because I my sense of time it um um I can't explain it uh it becomes quite vague what happened um how do I know I had a walk-in um I sensed I had a walk-in and then um I think it was Laurie Ladd started talking about it and um I was like yes yes yeah that's exactly what happened to me um and I definitely had a walk-in after my Kundalini awakening um wow you just you just have the you know conscious awakening um laundry list you you did every item on there didn't you and there's more there's, it's just not it, it's um, yeah yeah I can't even begin to tell you but yeah well tell me I love this stuff I just I think it's so um, fascinating I I don't even know where to begin so much has happened in my life um you know oh when you got hit by the car, um, did you cross over then or just? No, no, I got injured then. I got injured. Um, it hit me on my back. And um, yeah, that, that um, see, I, yeah, I, my ha yeah, my mind's quite fuzzy at the moment anyway. But yeah, I got hit by a car and um, I had to stop horse riding, which was my main love at that point. That kind of it was almost I seemed to have like these sections in my life things stopped so that I had to stop horse riding um and I was led in bed for a great deal of time um, I seem to have all these quite intense experiences and I kind of um I said yeah I suppose to bring me to where I am now um yeah I've yeah 
I don't even, yeah, I don't, it's really, um, yeah, I don't know, because there's so many things that have, I don't know how much to go into. Whatever um, you want to go into, where, just uh, tap in and see what spirit wants you to share. I suppose, one of, like, I've always been psychic, and I've always told people about different things, even, you know, when I was a child, and, and I was, i I've been, I'm, yeah, I was astro traveling at a young age and nobody really knew what was going on. And because I, I was an only child, it was all kind of ignored and, or, you know, oh, you know, just nobody was listening to me, but I was always, I was always, I want to say I was always banging on about something. I was always like, well, you know, look at this, look at what's happening here. Look, look, and, and all this. And um, uh, I suppose like one of the major events in my life was my dad committed suicide when I was 25 and um, I was uh, he, he'd been at my house the night before and I was at work and I can remember it now I was at work and we went to take the money to the bank and this feeling came over me of oh my god my dad's in trouble and I just turned to the lady next to me and I said um, there's something wrong with my dad I need to get him help and that's kind of all I said. And then um, I went home and um, lots of things transpired. And I basically spent the whole evening trying to persuade my family that there was something wrong with my dad, that he needed help. And um, it then turned out that he hadn't turned up to where he was supposed to go to go and see my his mum, my gran. And um, I'm sure it was past life. So I just spent the whole time trying to speak well speaking my truth but nobody was listening or believing me until I was like like you need to call the police um I, I knew that he'd committed suicide um and it it took hours hours um I think I started talking to them about it about five o'clock and I was eventually the police came and um, we found him and things at eight o'clock but um that that was a pivotal moment because um, obviously my life changed forever then. Um, and I suppose that's when my alcoholism really took off. But it was a pivotal moment as in um, I already had that sixth sense there and nobody was listening to me. And I was like, listen to me. Um, and nobody really did. Um, that's That has yeah. to be so, so frustrating and disheartening. So after you were trying to get everybody's attention and then it came to fruition. Did they start taking you seriously then or were they still no. just pushing it under the rug? Pushing it under the rug. Yeah. 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 Cause that, then it went to, um, it was like, he didn't exist. He'd never existed. It was, it was, I can't even begin to take, I don't want to come across as poor me. It was, it was, everything was pushed under the rug and I was left to organize the funeral, organize everything. Um, yeah, it, it, it was nuts. Well, don't feel like you're being poor me. I mean, you're, this, this story will help many because um, a lot of people go through this. Yeah. You know, they, they, they have, they're blessed with a gift and nobody will take them seriously as, you know, family members and things like that. So um wow so do you get the inkling somebody else in your family has psychic abilities because it seems like there's a lineage of that a lot of times and I'm curious um, if maybe somebody does in there that's why they're pushing it under the rug maybe maybe I, I don't know because um I was an only child um there's a lot of narcissists in my family and narcissists are highly, are highly psychic. Really? Um, highly psychic. I never knew that. Tell me highly, more. Highly psychic. Yeah. Yeah. They might not know it or maybe they do know it, um, but they are highly, highly psychic. That's, that's how they can manipulate so well. Um, Cause I was married to one for nearly 20 years. Yeah. Really psychic. Um, my my son's psychic, but he's kind of like, oh, mom, you know, and he doesn't want to know. Um, my daughter's highly psychic. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. 
Do you think I your think mom or dad? My were? dad was quite spiritual in a way, but he never really showed anything. He talked about white witches a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. So what else happened? What happened after that? Then you, um, I, it, like my whole life changed and my whole outlook on life changed. Everything changed. It's like the whole, everything had shifted on its axis and flipped this, everything had flipped basically. Um, I quit my job. I went off and worked in a head injury unit. Um, I don't know why I worked in a head injury unit, but I went off and worked in a head injury unit and it was, it was all men, all men in the unit. Um, a lot of them were motorcycle, motorcycle accidents or they were also um, people who had tried to commit suicide and it hadn't worked. Um, so I don't know, I just put myself into the fire. Mm. Um, and I did that for a year. And then um, from there, that made me even more determined to, um, I suppose, like live my life. Um, and I went on a round the world trip then um, with um, my boyfriend at the time. And we went around the world for about a year. Wow, that's a big deal. Yeah. So yeah. what what did you what what came up with that trip? Um well be, because at this stage I'm kind of dipping in and out of drinking heavily, not drinking heavily, and it's it's all quite um jovial at this point. I haven't sort of tipped over into like being quite dependent on alcohol. Um I suppose spirituality's gone out the window. I don't, I'm not even, that is, isn't even, I'm not even registering any of that, although things are happening, but I'm not even registering that. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it was the most amazing trip that I've ever been on. It was, um, m met the most amazing people, most amazing cultures. And um, it, it was the, what I, what I learned was it was the cultures with the least that the, were the most loving. Um, the Fijians were just, they were absolutely like, like welcome you with open arms, but they had nothing. Um, so that's what I learned. Um, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know, everything I do, so, I don't know, yeah, yeah. Well, what, what led you to becoming sober? Uh, what led me to becoming sober? I'd had enough. Um, my husband was also alcoholic, um, and it, in we'd moved from England to Wales in 2013. And um, in my head, I thought, um, you know, we'd be living in the middle of nowhere. I won't want to drink. It'd be fine. Um, and it was for a bit, and then. Um, it just it it just became like day after day I, I would I wouldn't drink in the day but I would start drinking about six o'clock at night um and so people may still have called said you know a lot of people say oh you're not an alcoholic but it's yeah it's not about what you drink it's about how why why you're using it and I was using it as a crutch to um cover up a lot of trauma um yeah, so I, I literally just, I just, I woke up that day, it, I think it was the 2nd of November, um, eight years ago, I woke up that day and I thought I've had enough. And um, I rang around different places, the doctors, AA, different places, and they said there was a meeting that night. Um, I went to the meeting. Um, I was too scared to tell my husband that I was going to the meeting. So I wrote him a letter to say I was going because I I knew that he would try and persuade me to carry on drinking. Um, so I wrote him a letter to say I was going to AA. Um, yeah, and I went that night and I went about three times a week. Um, but most of the time I went for three times a week and I didn't drink from that day forward. So, Wow. What, what spurred you to do that? You just realized you were not in a good space? Yeah, I literally just, I literally just woke up that day and thought, shit I can't do this anymore it's not enjoyable um I, I just it literally I just a, a switch had 
flick. I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I just, I thought, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, I don't, I don't know why. Um, I don't know, because the doctor would say, um, when I rang up the doctor, they'd say, make sure you keep some alcohol in the cupboard just in case you get the DTs or the shakes or whatever. Um, and I literally refused to have it in the, I said, I'm not, I said, I've given up. No, nope, that's it. Um, so I was quite stubborn. Um, well, it wasn't like you were drinking all day long, you know, and you <laughs> needed it, right? I don't know. Cause it, yeah. Did you have problems with withdrawal? No, I had, I had, um, high anxiety. Um, but I learned, um, as I became more sober, I recognized that I was disassociated. Um, and that was scary. Like, um, yeah, like going to the doctor about anxiety, but saying, kept, I kept saying to them, there's something more to this anxiety. It's not, I'm not just feeling that anxiety that other people talk about. I'm feeling this. And um, they just, well, they, they didn't listen. They didn't, um, I kind of um, diagnosed myself. I, suppose. I researched it myself because I knew that what I was experiencing wasn't just um, anxiety. Um, uh, yeah so now you're going down the road and you're sober and you're deciding maybe you don't want to be married anymore is that um no he kept um I, I won't talk about him too much but he kept dip he he went to AA about three times he, he there was a lot of issues he pretended he was had stopped drinking um as with most narcissists I gotta be careful what I say but as with most narcissists it's like a competition so he he, he would pretend that he'd wasn't drinking and he would be trying to show me that he could do it without AA but he was still drinking um and as I got sober I recognized that a he liked me drunk because he could manipulate me when I got sober he would say the same things and I'd go up oh, I'm sober now um I I remember what you said Whereas before I was an easy target because um, so he, he liked me drunk. Um, so yeah, it, yeah, I, I, it wasn't an easy decision to leave um, cause we had two children. Um, it, it was um, an incident happened in the August of 2019. And it, again, it was like that thing with, alcohol it was like no <laughs> it was like no you've crossed the line here um I'm going um yeah and now you're you have blossomed your your gifts are becoming more apparent yeah although I'm still very um nervous of my gifts um Oh, come yeah that's a big one um it's easy one thing after another it's like ah um how come well I had a unexpected kundalini awakening in um August 2020 it might have, I think it started before that um in the summer of 2020 anyway it was um during covid and um yeah and lots of things transpired and happened and I ended up having my children taken away and they were put into foster care. Um, and my son has now come back. He's living with his dad and my daughter is still in foster care and I haven't seen her for three years now. Um, oh my so God, I'm Nikki. Very, That's awful. I know. I don't want to cry. Oh, I'm, I'm very um, hesitant to... I feel... Um, I still feel quite constrained. I, I, it, I was, how it feels is I was punished for my gifts coming awake and I now have to be careful is how it feels. Although I'm becoming more vocal because I'm like, well, this is who I am. Um, uh, 
I'm not willing to shut it down anymore. I can't, um, I can't pretend to be something I'm not. Um, well, I think it's horrible. They split your kids up too. It's, it's all very complicated. It's all, it, it's, it's very, very complicated. Um, my son just made the decision to go back to his dad. My daughter, my daughter wouldn't. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I still feel like I have to be very careful um, and hold back, I suppose. Um, mm. Wow. It's, it, it feels to me a lot like, you know, back when people practiced more witchcraft openly and you had to hide who you were and be selective as to who you talked to because yeah. you'd get burned. Yeah. But the, the um, I mean, eventually I'm sure that I would just shout it from the rooftops because I would be like, ah! Um, but the insane thing is that I had, because I, I got referred to the psychiatric team um, and um, I had one side of them trying to prescribe me anti, um, antipsychotics and I had the other side fascinated by what I had to say asking psychics that live near them if what I was saying was how a psychic would behave and they them coming back to me and saying yes asking me what light language was they wanted to know every detail about what I was experiencing because they were fascinated but I was sat there thinking well I'm torn you've taken my children have been taken they're trying to prescribe this you're trying to get me to um talk about what's really happening and so I was like on this dancing thing in between I, I never took the antipsychotic you know I, my guide said you know you've had a Kundalini awakening no um but again I was like on that precipice it's a, it's it's a very similar um it's that same scenario of nobody believing me when I said about my dad and now it's a similar scenario with um, what happened then. Nobody was really believing me um, or listening to me. Um, yeah. What transpired during your Kundalini awakening? <laughs> um, <laughs> what transpired? Oh my God. Um, I can't really put it all into words. It was really fast. Um, I hadn't, I didn't even know what a Kundalini awakening was. I had literally, um, I, I start, first of all, I started a meditation course with a friend and um, it was a gratitude meditation course. And every time it finished, I kept saying to her, is this supposed to be happening to me? Um, like I was getting visitations from different beings and it was really intense. And I kept kind of ringing her up and saying, are you sure this is what's meant to be happening to me? And she was like, no, no, it's fine. It's okay. It's fine. And I was like, okay, then this must be all right then. Um, and it just got weirder and weirder. Um, and then I did some breath work with a friend and I, we were just doing, I think we we're just doing 11, 11 breaths. We were literally just breathing and I didn't even get to the 11th breath. And this, um, uh, I can only describe it as like a burning sensation shot up my back and up my front. And I was like, whoa. And um, you know, he managed to calm me down and um, I calmed down. I went to bed and then I woke up the next day and it was like, I, um, it was like I, um, it was like I relived all my past lives. I saw all my past lives um, every all of them like that, um, I could, somebody would speak to me, I could, um, their Akashic records would drop down, I would know all their Akashic records. Um, if I went to the supermarket or somewhere and um, I could tell what someone had had for dinner, I could tell you if they were a mass murderer, I could tell you if they were having an affair, I could tell you everything about every person in that room. Um, it was intense. That would be so overwhelming. It was intense. Um, it was, um, yeah, it was intense, really intense. And a lot of the things that people are um, talking about now 
I'm like, oh, I, I you know, I, I, that I got all that, all that information came to me in that short space of two weeks. Um, but it's only now when people are starting to um, talk about little snippets that I'm suddenly like, whoa, that was what that was then, was it? Because um, I just got the whole lot in one go, um, all the downloads, everything. Um, wow. So did that your abilities lessen a little bit or have you just learned yeah, how they, to control um, them or no it, it calmed down and got to a level um and then i i got the guidance that i needed to move and i also felt like i needed to i needed to leave behind what had happened so it was like i was that was that was the walk-in so I got the guidance to move and I sold everything in my house, every possession that I had. And if it didn't fit in the car, it wasn't coming with me. Um, I sold every memory that I had, everything. My dad's things, my grandma's, ev like everything went. And um, I, that's when I decided to move to Mumbles. Um, and it did all calm down, although I spent... <laughs> Yeah, it was still quite intense. So I was still, well, I was still really highly psychic, and all the time highly psychic. Um, yeah, and then I, I got to the mumbles in the December, I think, and then, or maybe a bit before that, November maybe. And by the February, I was starting to feel not well. Um, uh, there was there was just so much trauma coming up, and also I hadn't dealt with what happened with my children and everything just like came in so I had like um a year and a half nearly two years of um depression and anxiety and um disassociation and suicidal and yeah wow yeah <laughs> that's intense yeah. you are a very strong person Nikki Somehow, <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah. signed up for a lot when you came here. I know I did. I did keep, um, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I nearly didn't make it that, that year and a half. I nearly did not make it. I was like, literally like, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. So what was um, the catalyst to get you to shift from that feeling to where you are now? Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, yeah. Tell us about Kyle. <laughs> well, but, yeah, um, Kyle, it, it it was really odd because um, when I was ill, I would go out on these walks. I would go out, make sure I went out with Truffle, the dog, my daughter's dog, um, about three times a day. I would push myself to go out. And um, I can't remember. It was in the summer of, um, I can't remember all my years and dates. So yeah, 23, 22. Um, the summer of 2022, so last summer, um, I think it was, yeah, it was, it was. Um, I start, started passing Kyle sort of just on the front seafront and he would always say hello. And um, I, it was almost like a feeling of, who are you? Um, I think I know you, who are you? Um, and then we just kept passing each other and bumping into each other at random places. Um, and unbeknownst to me, he was walking, I don't know how many miles a day, from his house to Mumbles and back because he had been suffering from um, mild depression previously. Um, and then we just we just got talking and then I just happened to say to him one day, that I hadn't been able to go to my favorite park for about a year and a half. And he said, well, um, I'll meet you at the park and we can go to the park together. So we went to the park, then we went to a cafe. Then he he took me out to the Brecon Beacons the next day. Um, but I just didn't think there was anything in it because th there is a big age gap between us. Um, but yeah, we just kind of, we were together. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you tap in to Kyle, do you know him from a previous life or is he galactic family or what? Um, previous life, yeah. We've had many lives together, yeah. 
Yeah. Do, now, what does he think about your abilities? Um, I think, I think he thinks they're amazing, but I am still reticent, like, ah, still kind of holding myself back. Um, yeah. Um, it's that feeling, I suppose it all, it, it just goes, it, uh, it's like, um, past life, but it's also childhood as well. It's that feeling of, um, will somebody accept me for me or will I accept me for me? Um, and oh, my dog's going to start barking. And um, it, so I still, I do still hold myself back with Kyle um, because I think I don't want to, um, yeah. I, I think like like you asking me to do this, you know, come talk with you and, um, you know, it's obviously happened for a reason and it's a big, um catalyst I want to say um because I'm still in hiding <laughs> um, well I see your posts on Facebook and they're beautiful and they're profound and you have such great wisdom that you share that don't hide it girl <laughs> I know but it's so on Facebook it's quite easy to hide post things but also hide because I was like how can I get out of this talk tonight how can I get out and then um uh, somebody posted a message to me before we came on and um they said they had to rearrange something and I was like Phew. and um but it wasn't you and then you said you wanted a photo and I was like oh my god now she wants a photo <laughs> it's like ah <laughs> I can't hide <laughs> well your story and everything that you've gone through, even though it's it's a little bit challenging for you to share a lot of it, there's other people going through that right now too. Yeah. It's yeah. so helpful. So helpful. Yeah. I, I'm st I'm I can see the gifts now, you know, like after that year and a half of being unwell, I can see the I can see all the gifts now, you know, the I had to go through that depression I went through. I had to get to the point of being suicidal because when my dad committed suicide I was like how can anyone feel like that how could anyone do that I and then I worked in the head of the unit and I still couldn't get how someone could do it until I got to that point myself and I was like this is how he could do it because I had to get to that point to heal that part um yeah and it's like I feel I do I, I'm still coming to terms with my children but I do feel blessed for everything that's happened to me because it has given me such depth and insight that I could never get ever get from a book I mean I, it, it's a hard way to do it but um I, I have so much understanding for so many walks of life now and I have so much um like gratitude for the smallest thing because you know if because you know when I left my marriage I had to I left everything behind I left the house I left everything behind apart from my children and our dogs that was it I left everything behind and so and then I moved to Mumbles with nothing stepped on the floor for a bit in the, in, the, in the cottage um and obviously couldn't work with the depression and stuff. Um, at, at times I had no money, no food, but, and I had a, a definitely, I had, no, I had support in the spiritual community online and things, but zero family support, um, zero help from outside really. Um, it was just me and my dog soldiering on. It, but maybe I had to get to that point. Um, there is such beauty in the trauma. If once you get to the other side and you can get to a place of, I mean, you never fully are okay with some things, but you get to a point where you can live with it a little better. But the lesson that comes out of all of them is so beautiful 
And it's hard for a lot of people to understand that unless you've gone through it and you've really learned from it and used it to make you stronger rather than hide from it, perhaps with drugs and alcohol or just totally like checking out and acting like, you know, it doesn't exist. Do you feel that way? Yeah, definitely. Um, I also, I seem to always be put, I should, maybe I shouldn't say this. I, I used to be put in positions where um, they're saying um, where others fear to tread. Um, I can't think what I'm trying to say now. Um, it's almost like I have to see everything. Um, I can't think what I'm trying to say. Um, it's like you signed up for this life and your list is bigger than everyone else's. I don't know. It's like, I, um, I've had to like go into situations I'd never dreamt I'd be in. Um, you know, first of all, it was, you know, I left my marriage and there was domestic abuse and I suddenly, I know this is going to sound bizarre, but I suddenly went from being in a family in a, in a house, I think, to being at the job center, wondering what am I doing here? And now I'm on benefits and now this and now that and now social services and now the court system and now the mental health system. Um, it's almost like they want to see me to see all the nuts and bolts of everything um, to gain yeah. a wider yeah. perspective. Because, um, you know, th there was one time when I was suicidal and they, I begged for them to take me in because I just... I just didn't feel safe, but I I did eventually get admitted, but only be, for one night because I refused to leave. Um, but it wasn't. But I had to go there because um, my God, was it an eye opener? I was the only woman there for a start, and um, I was just wandering around going, "Well, when does the therapy start? When's the trauma thing start? When does this start?" And they were like, "There isn't anything," and I'm like, "What do you mean there isn't anything?" There isn't anything. I'm like, what? Well, what's happening? It's like, and you know, there were men walking around in circles. There were, there was a um, outside my window. There was a really beautiful grass area with flowers, and I was like, so I went, you know, I went to find the nurse, and I was like, how do I get out there? And she went, you don't. That's for the staff. And I was like, well, where's my, where's our bit? And she went, it's through those double doors. And I went out, and it was just concrete weeds and piles of cigarette butts and I'm just stood there like I want to be out there <laughs> it it it's like I had to go into that place um what a powerful I never... metaphor you know yeah yeah mm. so did we miss anything <laughs> to where you are now do we miss any events <laughs> Um, I don't, I mean, lots has happened to me. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Um, I suppose for me, I did write a post. I tried to write a post about it today. It's like, um, when people ask me to talk about various things, I'm like, but it's, I keep wanting to say like, I didn't buy a course on it. It's like, I didn't just become psychic. I was born psychic. I didn't just, so some people ask me questions or they, I tell them something and they go, oh, wow. And I'm like, is it, oh, wow. Because to me, it's normal. Um, I haven't known any different. Um, uh, you know, I don't, I've always been able to talk to animals. That's the other thing, you know, um, because I was brought up as an only child, but my parents were nev never really there. My dad was at work a lot. He was a farmer. And my mum was just um, non-existent, really. Um, and I was always surrounded by loads of animals. And I was always talking to animals. I spent more time talking to animals than I did humans. Um, so I've always been able to communicate with animals. I've always been able to communicate with plants. Um, but these things, to me, are normal. <laughs> Um, well, let's talk about know. some of that, because uh, that's fascinating to me. 
what kinds of things have you learned from talking with the animals and the plants? Um, it's not so much that. It's more like, um, like when I moved into the house in Mumbles, it, it was like the house plants telling me where they wanted to be positioned in the house. I got to be careful. I feel like I got to be a bit careful what I say. Um, Why? Oh, just because of everything that has happened. I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> you know, in case somebody sees it, who I don't want to see it. But um, I think it's time to come out the closet. <laughs> um, I've just always been able to communicate with animals. I just always, um, I've always had this affinity of being out, um, being able to, like being able to calm down the wildest dog, being able to ride the wildest horse, being able to, um, I, yeah, I, it's really hard to explain. Um, That's okay. You don't have to. Yeah. So who are some of the beings that you communicate with? I don't know. <laughs> That's the other thing because, um, I don't have it specific like that. It doesn't, um, I, I just get like an inner knowing and, um, well, you were saying after your Kundalini, you had visitors. So that's why I asked. Oh yeah. The, vi no, the visitors then were more like, um, yeah, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, beings in the house and things, um, yeah, like um, like we went to a church yesterday, and um, there was a walkway from the chapel to the no, from the church to the chapel, and in that walkway were some graves, and I could feel a being there, um, and I could feel them again as I came out, and I my guys just said they're resting, they're resting, um, yeah, um. I suppose the other thing that I did miss out was in the, so much has happened um, before well, or when the Kundalini awakening was starting to happen, maybe I kept getting callings to um, different beaches in Pembrokeshire um, to go and clear the beaches. Um, and it was mostly to clear um, items of domestic abuse or, um, maybe murders, um, yeah. <clears throat> um, Heavy energy, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where does Nikki go from here? Where where do you see yourself five years Living from in now? a cave, I don't know. <laughs> I'll join you. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do I see myself? That's the other thing, I need to, I need to, um, bring myself out um yeah um what what is your your favorite modality or gift to work with it would be probably a bit clearing um ley lines being out in nature um yes yeah I suppose it's really hard to answer that question because I've hidden myself away and I still am. Um, so I'm still dealing with um, like um, the issues of self-confidence and self-doubt and um, feeling good enough and <clears throat> not kind of hiding. Um, yeah. Um, so I haven't really thought where I'm going or what I'm doing. I just go with the flow each day. So, well, there's nothing wrong with that. That's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. So is there anything that you can share with everybody? Any insights that, um, have come forward with you recently? Probably not. I, cause I'm quite nervous. I can't, it's really hard to tune in or, um, I no, because when when the information for me comes through, it comes through like and then it's gone. Um so I suppose that's where I write it in 
Facebook is how I, because for whatever reason, the a journaling with a pen and paper doesn't seem to work. It, if I'm typing, it's it, it it flows or it start I start channeling sort of part way through. Um, um, pressure, no pressure at all. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm nervous, so my brain is quite um. That's okay. Yeah, I I appreciate you having your coming out party with me. Thank you. <laughs> Although and, I feel like I'm in the dark now because I've seen the, yeah, it's got dark quite quickly here. Um, I would say to anybody that feels called to uh, go to Nikki's Facebook page. And if she's open to it, I will post that below in the comments because you have beautiful insights that you share. That's why I was drawn to invite you here today. Thank you. I, th I think one of my, well, I know one of my, one of, I don't know if you want to call it a gift. One of my abilities is, uh, it, it's like I was, I've always been told that I'm, a, I'm, I'm on the coal face. I'm at ground level. Um, so I, I like my, when I write, I want it to be able to be read by everyone. So I don't want to um, make it, I want to make it access, accessible to the masses so that every, like a child could read it or, or, or you know, so it's accessible to everyone. Um, so it could be understood by everybody. Yeah. Not using, yeah. sometimes I think, feel and this is not dissing anybody it's just my observation the spiritual community sometimes can get carried away with big terminology where it's like joe blow who just woke up yesterday and is like wait a minute everything in my life is changing what's going on and wants to learn is going to have a really hard time breaking all yeah. that down or also also they may think well i'm never going to understand that so i, I i'll just give up now yeah um, yeah. Yeah. True, true. Well, my dear, any parting words you would like to share? Because I know you probably want to go to bed. It's late over there. And <laughs> your your doggy has been snoring up a storm. Oh, yeah. So. So what about that? <laughs> Kyle said, what are you going to do with the dog? I was like, what do you mean the dog? And then I forgot about the snoring. Yeah. I Sorry. love it. I love it. Well, he's on the sofa. Um, he's no, I just, wanted, I just wanted to say thank you. And, and thank you for asking me. Um, and kind of, you didn't push me, but ask, you know. I'm putting kind of me in direct. The position, yeah, putting me in the position that um, I knew that I had to say yes. So, um, so thank you. Yes, and I would encourage everybody to um, follow follow Nikki's Facebook. She has some beautiful wisdom that she shares. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, my dear. I appreciate you and we will say goodbye for today. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.